What is up guys, my name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database and in this video we're going to be learning how to set up emissive materials inside of Cinema 4D with Redshift. And really we're just going to be using the base Redshift material, but I'm going to show you how to set it up to have the material actually emit light like the thumbnail that you've seen from this. It took me a little bit of uh, scouring around the internet and asking forms and whatnot, so I wanted to make a really quick video because I just did this, I just figured it out, and there's a chance that I might forget it too. So let's get right into Cinema 4D. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D, and I've, I'll have i zoom out. I've made a little bit of a, uh, a Star Wars-inspired theme here, or scene rather, and it's really simple. These are rocks that are from Quixel Megascans. They're from the, the free set. I'm probably gonna be uh, buying and subscribing to that service because these are a ton of fun and they're set up the correct way as far as redshift materials this is a character from adobe mixamo fuse and he is rigged up with some nice uh, redshift materials as well but most importantly down here this is a texture from polygon and it doesn't look like much in the viewport but it's really cool and it's this kind of like lava texture here and uh, the most important part is that the lava should be glowing it should be glowing right so I have a couple lights in this scene as well. I'll show you right now. We have one area light up there and we have our little cylinder light or lightsaber. So I'm going to actually turn those off. So I'm turning off the, the backlight, turning off the lightsaber. And so all that's in this scene now, I'm going to turn the camera. I'm going to go to the camera and oh, that's the environment. I'm sorry. Um, all that should be in this scene now is the material. So the first thing you want to do if you want to use the uh, emissive material here uh, is go to render settings and someone tipped me off on this so we're in redshift and the samples are pretty high for me so maybe I'll uh, bring them down a little bit so we'll do like 16 and like uh, 128 just to speed this up a little bit for the demo for the YouTube video like that and so the first thing we have to do is make sure we're in redshift then you have to make sure that GI is on because this is a GI calculation um, so I have brute force irradiance point cloud so that'll be pretty speedy and then the last thing you have to go to is over here is go to integration. You want to turn off, it's going to be on by default. You want to turn off default light and that's going to be Cinema 4D's default light. So let me turn it back on and show you what happens. So I'm going to load up the render view here. Oh, and the shot's going to suck now. Hold on, let me, let me frame up an epic shot. My epic shot got screwed up. Uh, I'm going to take my camera and I'm just going to refocus it on the person. There it is. Okay, so let's uh, load this in there. Let this boot up. I am running with um, a Threadripper 1950X and two NVIDIA 1080 Ti. So this is the speed of that. And um, yeah, so this is what happens if you have the default light on, which will come on by default. Super ugly, of course, we have the default light and we have our material that is going to be emitting light, but it's getting crushed by the default light. So we're going to turn off default light and very quickly, there we go. Now we actually see that the material is emitting light. So let's go look at that material. So I'm going to close render settings, make sure again you have GI on and turn off the default light. So I'm going to pause this and I'm going to click on my texture and should we build it from scratch or can I just break it down? I guess I'll, um, I guess I'll just break it down. Let's do it from scratch, right? That makes the most sense. So I am going to create a new redshift material here. The, the material, the Uber material rather, is uh, pretty amazing. I like it a lot. I'm going to call this RS Lava. Yeah, RS Lava, there it is. And let's open it up. And then I'm going to also drag this onto the, actually I have like specific settings on this. I guess we'll do it live. We'll just do it together. So I'm gonna put this on there and I'm gonna tell it to be cubic. Oh, and it kept the settings. So I'll put this back to what the default would be. Like this, and we'll go over those in a second. So that's the plane. Okay, so let's do some look dev stuff here and set up this material. So I'm gonna turn this on. It's a whole lot of nothing. There's a whole lot of nothing there. And maybe I should turn on the backlight. Let's see what that looks like. No, we'll keep that off. Though that looked epic. <laughs> I must say that looked really cool. So we're gonna set up this material. This is the redshift material. And if you don't know how to do this, then we get to do that together here. But we're gonna be mostly focusing on the emissive part. So we're gonna go to texture. And this is how you basically bring in files. Um, like in a material here, like a default Cinema 4D material, you would go to color and you would import the texture this way. Uh, using the node editor, you're gonna wanna bring it in using this texture node and it's here, or you can just type texture and it shows up pretty easy. This is like the main thing you're gonna be doing in the shader graph here. So we're gonna go find our texture. So this is for the rock. 
I'm gonna go to my textures, Polygon, I've got a bunch. Really recommend Polygon, really cool stuff. So I think it was the light one. Is that right? I think so. So we're gonna bring in our diffuse map and we're gonna plug it into diffuse color. I'm gonna copy this and I'm going to bring in our uh, reflectance map, which I'm hoping is specular. <laughs> That's what I use it like. Um, I put mine in color because then you can change the weight later if you wanted to. And there's still nothing happening because there's no lights in the scene. Uh, I'm going to then go to roughness and bring in our glossiness map. I realize nothing's happening, but this is how you set it up. Then you're going to put that in reflection roughness. Pretty straightforward. Uh, then I'm going to bring this down here and I'm going to load in my height map, which is, where'd you go? Height map. Is there no height map for this? Light displacement. Oh, it's displacement. That's not height. Okay. Looking for the wrong thing. The displacement map. Okay. So now let's set up the normal map here. And this is all the standard workflow for PBR. So we're going to go to overall bump. And so we're doing everything but <laughs> essentially the, uh, the, the emissive thing. And I'm going to lastly get, before we do emissive, I'm going to get uh, a displacement map like this. And you feed this into the texture. And then you feed this into the displacement. And we're done. So now if I want to make this light actually, uh, this material actually glow, which is the whole point of me downloading this texture, I wanted to play with it, that Andrew Price put up. Looks awesome. We're going to go to our emissive map here. No. And I'm going to add this to the overall emission. So this is what I did at first, and I was like, great, this does a whole lot of nothing. But, you know, we keep, we keep playing around, and I eventually figured out what you're supposed to do here. Um, you have to go to the RS material and you have to go to overall, which is going to be in base properties usually. And you're going to need to go to overall because you plugged it into the overall emission and now you've got to add a weight. So one has it show up. Um, five, it gets brighter. 10, even brighter. 20 is where I have it for my scene. So there's just a little bit of fill light under there. And then you could of course do like a hundred and it's like, boom, like all lit by the lava. And it looks really cool. And I think depth of field is on, so I'm getting some pretty cool bokeh stuff happening. Uh, and that's essentially the workflow for emissive. Uh, on top of that, I'm going to bring this back to 20. Uh, on top of that, for general redshift tessellation stuff with displacement, with this plane, you want to add a redshift tag, which I will delete. You're going to go to tags, redshift tags, redshift object. You want to go to that object and you want to go to geometry and turn on override, turn on enabled, and then turn on displacement. And then you'll have your cool displacement maps like you're going to probably want from all your PBR materials. And you're going to get something like this. So I'll do like a final render of this. I'm going to save it. And uh, that is the workflow. And then I'll show you quickly what else is happening in the scene to get this final render. I think this looks really cool. And I am extremely excited about... How's the focus on this? I'm extremely excited about using Redshift and upgrading Cine Designer to be able to use it because with my two 1080 Ti's and the speed of Redshift, I can render this 1080 by 800 frame, or 1920 by 800 frame, which is huge with depth of field, with cool textures, really clean in 20 seconds. It's bananas. It is absolutely insane. So I'll show you what else is happening in the scene to kind of finish up, but that's how we do emissive. I guess is a super, super quick recap. Do all the other stuff normal. You're gonna need to put your, um, oh, that's not this one. Is it? Is this the one we just did? Oh, it's this one, my bad. Uh, you're gonna want to put your texture into the uh, overall emissive, and then you have to make sure that, um, oops, my bad, didn't mean to turn that off. Uh, you need to make sure that in overall, you've turned on the emission weight to something pretty high. And you need to make sure that in the render settings that you have the default light off if it's the only thing and you need to have GI on. That's it. But that took me about two or three hours on the internet to figure out. So hopefully this saves you a little bit of time. So here's our progressive render. And what I have here is the area light in the background. I'll turn that on to the backlight. And we have a redshift environment. So that's adding the haze and having it pick up on the light. And the settings that I use for environment are 0.001 for scattering. So maybe it comes in at like one. <laughs> that looks awesome. That looks so cool. But as you turn it down, uh, it gets to be more subtle. And then if you don't have any attenuation, 
uh, the light goes on forever, which is what I don't I don't want that. So like 0.1 is too much. 0 0.05, it just puts it, the, the light basically dies eventually. It stops going out into the world. So those are my settings there. And then you can change how much this light is actually going to put out into the world by changing this. And you can so if I did one, it would be very bright, and that's okay. It looks okay. 0 0.5, 0 0.2. I forget what I had it at. 0 0.2 looks okay. So that's how I'm doing the environment and getting this like kind of cool. Uh, atmospheric perspective effect where this is really contrasty and this is less contrasty and then the last thing I did was add another area light That is a lightsaber and you can again with this make it glow like crazy in the haze uh, 0.5 it's still too much it's just kind of covering up the scene overall 0.1 something like that looks okay. It's just a little bit of glow and um, I will give us a final render here. So that's a quick look uh, at how to use Cinema 4D and Redshift and set up the basic material that has some emissive channel that's glowing. So there's just a couple little things you have to remember to do, and then you get glowing lava, and you get glowing lava, and the rest of this is like normal, you know, atmosphere or environment with area lights and volumetrics turned on. And then again, Redshift, incredible with two, in, two 1080 Ti's just tearing through this scene. 30 seconds of frame means I could do an animation and it would, wouldn't be all that bad. A couple hours I'd have like a legit camera move or have him moving and with the depth of field and everything together, I am super happy with this. And for the people that are watching this that are using Cine Designer, uh, Cine Designer R3 is going to be coming out hopefully by the end of the year. I'm updating everything to work with Redshift and still work with physical. Uh, and then I'm going to update as well Set Designer. Everything I have in Set Designer will also work with Redshift so that we can do this which is so fast and so cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about it, leave them in the comments below and give the video a like if you learned something new. I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers.